So here's a, a close-up of the business end of a, of a round goby. They're actually quite a, an attractive looking species. My name is Derek Salmon, and I love fish, all different kinds, big and small. I'm on a quest to learn about every species of fish that lives in the state of Wisconsin. So come join me on Badgerland Fishes. Hey everyone, I'm Derek Salmon, and today we are at Lake Michigan, and a lot of people come here to fish for salmon and trout, but today we're after something much different. It's a small species of invasive fish called the round goby. The round goby was first discovered in the United States in 1990 in the St. Clair River, which connects Lake Huron to Lake St. Clair. It was presumably brought over in ballast water from ships that were previously either in the Black or Caspian Sea. Since its original discovery in 1990, the round goby population has spread rapidly in the Great Lakes and some of its tributaries. In certain areas, goby densities on the lake bottom have reached over 20 per square meter, about the equivalent of over 20 fish in the space of a bathtub. Fishing with me today is Dr. John Lyons, curator of fishes at the University of Wisconsin Zoological Museum in Madison, my brother Ryan, and my friend Bree. While the rest of the crew have already caught multiple gobies, I'm still working on getting my first. <laughs> I mean, Ben's much more hardcore about it. I mean, I only do it in Wisconsin. I'm not really yeah, there you go. Look at that. Nice. I'm really, you know, I don't like to fish anywhere but Wisconsin. Pleased with my catch, I added my goby to our already numerous collection. So these are a bunch of gobies that we caught today. And we have a permit because we're fishing with John um, to be able to actually handle them. But one of the main things that people are concerned about is having these guys travel to different places and take over the ecosystem in different regions. So as soon as you catch one here in Lake Michigan, uh, you got to throw it back immediately and uh, make sure not to transport any, any gobies to different regions. What do you think? This is cool, there's a lot of them in there. They're very beautiful fish. A few tips you can use to ID around goby are the frog-like eyes they have on top of their head, this black spot on the dorsal fin, and then this fused pelvic fin that actually makes almost like a suction cup. Most fish will have uh, two on the bottom, but on the goby it's fused together and that helps them to kind of suction to different things. During our trip, we also met some fishermen who learned just how abundant the round gobies were. So what do you were. think about all these gobies? Well, cool. There's like a lot of them. I would really like to catch something else. <laughs> There's a lot of gobies here, huh? There's a lot of gobies yeah. here. There's a lot of gobies. We just, and so he right away put a worm on his hook, put it down, and within 30 seconds caught a goby. So, uh, and then since then, I think he's caught about 10. <laughs> so, yeah, it's well, been cool. a lot of fun. One of our fishing partners, John Lyons, has been studying the round goby since it was first introduced into the Great Lakes. Well, I'm John Lyons. I'm the curator of fishes at the University of Wisconsin Zoological Museum in Madison. And I've been studying the fishes of Wisconsin now for almost uh, 35 years or so. I caught one! And I've been following around goby since they first arrived in the Great Lakes in the early 1990s. I kept them biting. And oh they God. first showed up uh, in I Lake Erie and Lake Huron and then rapidly spread through the rest of the Great Lakes. And now they're basically abundant everywhere, at least everywhere where there's rocks or, or solid bottom. And unfortunately, they've had a number of uh, negative effects. They've gotten very abundant, they're a very aggressive bottom-dwelling species, and they've basically displaced uh, most of the native bottom-dwelling species, the sculpins, the darters, things like trout perch, uh, native species that were here before. And so an area, uh, a shoreline area that might have had three or four or five different bottom-dwelling native species is now completely dominated by a single non-native species, the round goby. Here's a close-up of the business end of a, of a round goby. They're actually quite a, an attractive looking species.
In the Great Lakes, round gobies are one of the only fish species to be able to feed on invasive zebra mussels, giving them an abundant food source that other fish cannot take advantage of. Additionally, they feed on and outcompete small native fish and feed on the eggs of larger fish species. They've also been known to be a vector for the spread of avian botulism. Infected gobies become ill and easy targets for birds who become infected after eating the infected gobies. Round gobies can grow to almost one foot in length and can live to be almost four years old. Females are able to lay about 90 to 3,800 eggs at a time, about every 20 days from April to September. Nests are guarded by males until the eggs hatch. One positive of the round goby invasion has been their role as a prey species for other animals, including trout and salmon and the Lake Erie water snake, which was taken off the federal endangered species list in 2011. Overall, the round goby is a voracious and abundant predator in the Great Lakes. Despite their attractive appearance, they are a threat to the health and diversity of native species. Their role as a prey item provides some positive impacts to the species that feed on them, however the negative impacts outweigh the positive at this time. Although efforts are underway to reduce round goby numbers, it is likely that they will be present in the Great Lakes for many years to come. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time on Badgerland Fishes. <laughs> yep, I got a big one. This is awesome. Thanks for showing us the spot. Yeah, yeah sure thing. This is too small to lip. I think the spot is the whole harbor. <laughs> <laughs>